Everybody, welcome back, and thank you so much for being here. I'm Yumble, and today I want to discuss Cities Skylines 2. More specifically, though, I want to go over the traffic management tools and road building tools built into the game currently. I'm very excited to say that we're all going to have the same tools at launch, whether you're playing vanilla, modded, it's not going to matter. We're all going to have the same road building tools. Many mods have been replaced, many things have been changed, but there are still some things that are glaring omissions in my opinion. So today I want to talk about what's good about road building and traffic management, uh, what could be improved, and changes that I hope are implemented for all players over the next, uh, over the course of the life of the game, honestly. Everyone, thanks again for being here. Let's get into it. Let's start with a huge positive, because I'm such an optimistic guy. Let's start with something positive that's changed since the first game and is going to make things a lot easier. And that is the road tools. The way that roads are drawn, the way that networks are stitched together in this game is so free. Uh, free. Freeing. Freedom. It's very, very good. So look at these merges and splits, how natural they are, and how this, this uh, lane departs and this lane is added. Uh, in a in a split and a merge so effortlessly a split there the way that this works and the reason this works is because the the networks do not default to snapping to the center of the road as in the first game now you can almost on a per lane basis you see these snapping options here like beautifully i can snap to the right side here and come off at a realistic angle which is no angle <laughs> going straight ahead and then create an effortless split with no mods, with no anarchy, no anything. And it just automatically does it. The lane math is also pretty impeccable, especially when it comes to highways in this game. Now that also extends to non-highway roads, where I can take a two-lane one-way road, or rather a, a four-lane bi-directional road, and I can split this off in either direction at will. So no mods, no nothing. This is clearly just a vanilla experience as mods don't exist in the game yet at the date of recording but look at that with no effort at all i've split this single network into two and we can further fix that using the built-in tools no traffic light required there probably get rid of these two crosswalks and just use the one there and that is it now this would have required node controller this would have required anarchy um, a small list of mods would have been required to make this work in the original game and i've just done it effortlessly, so City Skylines 2 is, is off to a great start in that regard. I really love the network options built into the game day one. So for instance, this is a 3 plus 2 network which was not available in the original game for a very long time. And the point of this, and generally asymmetrical roads are used for this, for turning pockets. And I love that the game intuitively knew what I was going for here. So we have this three lane road on this one side, Departing lane turns left, that becomes a dedicated left turn. The other two lanes are straight through. The game knew what I wanted here, and I think that's beautiful. Where this idea falls short is in a regular intersection. So what we're looking at here is much more common than that, that kind of weird intersection we were just looking at. Here's a typical three-legged intersection, and you'll notice it kind of gets it right. Like maybe this is a turn pocket, and I like that. This lane is straight through, and I think that's great. This one is shared straight and right. Pretty close, like that's that's all fine. This one comes out a bit weird though. This lane approaching from the right and the left, the minor road has a dedicated left turn, super duper, we love that. But then the right lane is a left and a straight and a right turn all in one. And that's not necessarily what I'd prefer. It gets a bit worse as you add lanes to this so if we make it a more typical wider intersection now it's a three plus two it gets the dedicated left turn right once again but the other two lanes are all kinds of not what i'd want so this makes a a shared left and straight here makes a shared right and straight it's it's so close yet so far at the same time and the tools built in i i really wish i could overcome this but here's the real critique of this Let's say I want this middle lane to get rid of its left turn. I'm going to select the no left turn, and uh-oh, it is wholesale. All of the lanes cannot, uh, cannot turn left now. 
if I want to ban a, a road from going straight, I can only ban all the lanes from going straight. If I want to ban a right turn, I've banned all of the options from this. So what we really need here are per lane options. I, I really want the, the developers and, and everyone to hear this, and I really hope it happens rather soon so we all have access to these tools. What I want to see are per lane traffic management options. I want to be able to either draw a line, a lane connector from here to here, or I want to be able to influence by adding arrows per lane. Either of those would solve all of my problems in that regard. I suppose it's a failure of the traffic management tools here, the road services. I want to see the road service options expanded massively, including but not limited to per lane traffic management options. Along with those additional lane management tools, what I really want to see are additional networks. So for example, this, this 3 plus 2 could be turned into a 4 plus 2, and it would actually overcome the automatic lane math problem that we have here. I believe it would detect four lanes coming up would be a dedicated left turn, a dedicated right turn, and then two straight through lanes going across to the other 4 plus 2 road. So that would overcome a lot of issues, and you wouldn't even need per lane management tools to use that in the game. Additionally, a 3 plus 1 would work similarly, where you would get a dedicated left turn, a dedicated right turn, and then a single straight through lane to go into the opposing one lane. So I think that the lane math system is very, very strong. It needs a lot of refinement, and with a few additional networks, it would work even better automatically. This particular interchange is called a single point urban intersection. All of the moves that I just made with developing all these roads and making all these connections would have required maybe a handful of mods, probably five or six mods at least, to make this shape and to make this functional. Uh, let me show you what's going on behind the highway here. So just using the built-in tools, we wind up being able to make a pretty advanced intersection here where left turns are allowed to happen at the same time. Uh, using lane math and using different types of roads, I'm able to automatically get a pretty desirable result here. Uh, it's not as refined as it probably could be, but here we have three lanes. We, uh, we allow one to be a right turn and a simultaneous straight through. That's not exactly what I'd prefer, but pretty close. And then the left lane disappears into a left turn only, which is fine. This is also traversable by pedestrians because I've upgraded these highways, the, the, turn, uh, the left turn highways, into regular one-way streets, single lane one-way streets, which have a sidewalk. Um, I'm not saying it's great for pedestrians, I'm just saying you can whip up a design like this without mods, without any extras, just built into the game. I really think that's good. Is it as refined as it could possibly be? No, certainly not. There's probably a dozen little changes I'd like to make some of which I can make using the built-in tools, and then others would require more advanced traffic management tools. Like this traffic light here is a three-phase light. There's a, a phase for the left turning traffic from the highway, a phase for the left turning traffic going onto the highway, and then one additional phase for the straight through traffic to make it through. Uh, but just the fact that I could whip this up so quickly and, and fairly effortlessly is a testament to the, the power of the new road system. I think it would be wrong of me not to touch on roundabouts in this video and just say that I think the way roundabouts have been implemented are fantastic, probably better than the first game. 
Uh, certainly for the for somebody playing the base game, this is much better. But even for those playing with mods, I think this is a huge improvement. I'm going to replace this intersection with a probably a medium roundabout, and it automatically sets everything up, which is beautiful. The size of the center kind of paved or the center circle there are what you're really changing. That's what you're changing when you do a roundabout, but the configuration stays the same. And I think it's beautiful that it kind of automatically sets up similar to a turbo roundabout. You can see these markings here that say the right lane can go right as well as straight. The left lane can go straight as well as left. So they've preserved, automatically they've preserved the two straight through lanes, which is what you generally want in a turbo roundabout type configuration. And the minor road that's crossing here, it intelligently knows that the right lane is straight through and right, and the left lane is left turn only. So they'll wind up having to make a left by going in the left lane. And I think that's great. That's great for everyone's workflow. It saves on time, saves on effort. I used to build these manually, and the fact that it can just be plopped in the middle of a junction is, is very, very convenient and appropriate for the whole thing. I also think that roundabouts function a lot better in this game. Not just because there's less, less traffic in my little broken city here, but because traffic seems to flow more, I'd say naturally, a bit more naturally. Uh, it was very start and stop in the first game and the cars would really get hung up on each other. And in this game, everyone seems to flow fairly fluidly, which, which lends itself to the roundabout specifically as there's a lot of yielding and adjusting happening at the roundabout. So overall, I, I plan to explore this a bit more scientifically in the future, but I think that the roundabout system is just much better in virtually every way. In closing, I just want to say that I think City Skylines 2 is already head and shoulders an improvement against City Skylines 1 in terms of road building and flexibility, traffic management, lane management, lane math. All of these things together are really, really great, and the game functions excellently right out of the box. I just want to see some minor improvements and changes that I think will make major differences for the player base who want to build realistic junctions and realistic interchanges, like me. This is my, my forte in the game, and I really want to explore this further. And I think just a few more tools and refinements would work wonders in the game, but we're already off to a great start. Everyone, thanks for hanging out. I've been Yumble. Feel free to check out a stream sometime, and feel free to join the Discord if you want to talk more about City Skylines too. That's all I've got for today. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.